I, I think I think globally, Qatar, Singapore have been two of the top three or so leaders in thinking about this and thinking about how do you build a meat production system, not just for the next five years, but for the next 50 years. Yeah, so there, there are ways to make meat without needing billions of animals, without using a third of the world's planet to uh, plant soaring corn to feed those animals. And we do what's called cultivating meat. And there are about 100 companies in the space today. We're the only one that's actually selling. And you start with a single cell, and then you feed nutrients to the cell. And you can actually ultimately make billions of pounds of meat without needing all the land and the resources and the energy. Um, our, our company is called Good Meat, and we hope to also do this in Qatar. Yeah, QI is uh, one of our most important uh, investors. So they decided to invest in us, I think because they saw the role that food security plays here in Qatar um, and, and our role in, in leading that. Eventually, we want to build facilities here that can not only help provide food security for the country, but we can also export that technology across MENA, to Europe, across Asia. So the partnership is not just about the capital, but is also about the partnership to produce and, and uh, make sure that this place is the one of the most resilient when it comes to food security and people get to enjoy chicken and beef and all sorts of meat for the long term. I, I, think, I think globally, Qatar, Singapore have been two of the top three or so leaders in thinking about this and thinking about how do you build a meat production system, not just for the next five years, but for the next 50 years. Um, and I think part of the reason is if, if you don't have the land and uh, the resources to have hundreds of thousands, millions of animals, it makes you think differently. It makes you think about how you sort of leapfrog the current technology to something better. So we've been fortunate to work with uh, a lot of the leaders here in Qatar, with DVC, with folks at the Free Zone to begin the early stages of what uh, a longer term production facility uh, would, uh, would look like. So when you look at the big impacts around climate change, what's really causing climate change, the way we eat animals is responsible for more carbon emissions than all the transportation sources combined. We use a third of our planet today just to plant feed, to feed the animals, which is more than the billion people get to eat that are going to bed hungry every single night. So you're not gonna solve the climate challenge without solving the food and the meat challenge. But we wanna do a lot more than that. We wanna make billions of pounds of this globally. And I think you're looking at a multi-decade long project ultimately to get to that kind of scale. I think that one of the biggest misconceptions about cultivated meat is that it's not real meat. So it's just as real as a piece of chicken that you would have at a restaurant tonight after, after this event. It is real chicken. If you have a chicken allergy and you consume it, you're gonna have an allergic outbreak. And the second is, I just think a confusion about the process. It might feel overly engineered, but the truth is we use a non-GMO process. I mean, I think it's just a part of the process of educating people about what it is. People need to learn more about the process. Uh, and ultimately, they're gonna do that by us selling here um, and asking a lot more questions about it. We, we welcome that. Yeah, so a few things are happening. One is we're working with the Ministry of Health uh, to hopefully get regulatory approval sometime soon. And then the second is we're working with the Qatar Free Zone to map out plans for what a, a large production facility would look like. So ultimately, we're not just selling here, but we're, we're producing here.